There's fish. There's one, Bob. Hi. Here we go. First one of the morning. Here we go. On a top water yep. bait. Step back to your right a little bit. Fighting good. Yeah. I think I was almost on the first cast, wasn't it? Was the first cast. <laughs> There's a good one. Yeah. Manasquan Reservoir. Springtime bass fishing with my good buddy, Captain Steve Horvath. Stay tuned, it's going to be a good one. <laughs> nice start. Yeah. Popper. Another one. Yeah. This goes to show you, even on some of these bright days, Bob, they'll still eat a top water. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Yeah. This guy in. Nice little, little guy. We're here in late spring, I'm going to say. I'm going to give it that. Early summer, yeah. yeah, late spring. We're on Matasquan Reservoir, a really interesting uh, body of water. Steve, just tell us a little bit about Matasquan Reservoir. Manasquan Reservoir is 770 acres. It's part of a bigger facility. It's 1,200 acres. It's got boat ramps, a boat rental, a visitor center, and a five mile long jogging path. Now, the water from the lake, which by the way is 4 billion gallons in capacity, which is a lot of water, yeah. is used for local municipalities. Now, there are some restrictions on the lake. First of all, it's electric motors only. Second of all, you always have to have a life vest on, and it's open from 6 a.m. in the morning until sunset. See, what kind of uh, fish we would be expect to be catching in here today? Well, Bob, there's a whole lot of different fish in here. There's largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, a lot of panfish species like crappies. There's pickerel, tiger muskies, uh, hybrid stripers, just about anything you can imagine in fresh water is here. There were even some trout left over from when they used to stock. Yeah, uh, years ago I caught, I caught a trout here on a, on a crankbait one time. Right. There we go. It's a big fish. Nice fish. Yep. Woo. Here we go, I'm gonna lift them up. Nice fish, Stevie. Nice fish. You just came up on it. Yep. Came up, swirled on it, and we got him. Again with the pop bar. Okay, you go that way. I'll go get off. Get the drum. Okay. And the important thing is that even though this is a bright, sunny morning that you really wouldn't think would be much of a top water day, the fish are eating it. So you have to give it a chance. Steve, talk about um, like where we are as far as the, the structure that we're, we're trying to hit. Did you say we have a ledge out here or something? Right. What we are is, it's a nice little fish yeah, here. Very nice. We're uh, up toward the dam end, and what we're doing is we're fishing a break. The drop off is from about six to 12 feet, and the fish are just up on top of this six feet of water. Mm -hmm. Now, what I think is going to happen is if the top water bite dies on us, these fish are going to move back a little bit deeper, and we'll catch them on a worm or a Carolina rig or something like we'll that. We'll just throw up on the ledge and just bring it down. Right. Because they'll move out. Yeah, with the sun getting up on them, they're probably going to. Yep. Gonna move. He's a nice looking fish. Oh, yeah. Steve, we just moved back onto an, a, a spot here uh, that we, we felt we got more fish on. Right. But let's just talk a little bit about the baits we're using uh, and, uh, and the cadence and stuff like that? Well, we're both fishing popper type lures. Now a popper is fished, like you said, in the cadence. It pop, 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 pop. Some days you want to continuously pop it quick. Some days you want to slow it down. You have to let the fish, you know, determine what type of mood they're in and, and how they want it. If you see fish following your popper up, then that generally means that you're not popping it fast enough. If fish are missing it, a lot of times you're not popping it fast enough. 
But a nice thing to, to know is, generally speaking, the clearer the water, the faster you want to work a popper. Yeah, you don't want to let them have a good look at it. Right. Another thing is we're fishing over grass. Now, if I was fishing a lone stump or a lone tree and casting to it, I would throw the popper out there and I would keep it in place for a long time around the strike zone. But for fishing out here over open water, I'm going to be pretty much continually moving the popper. And the, the big thing is you want to keep your rod tip low and you want to move the popper with the rod, not the reel. Right, that's, a, that's an important uh, right. thing. It's, it's the rod action, really, that, that, yep. that does it. And every time I pop, I throw slack in the line back toward the popper. So I, I don't want the, the popper gliding forward as I'm fishing it. I just want the popper to move as I pop it. And you'll hear a little zit, 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 zit on the water. And that's the right next to the boat. Right. When you're doing that, that's that nice little pop that you're getting. And poppers can be fished, you know, if there's a little bit of a ripple on the water, it's good. If it's flat calm, it's good. If the water has a really good ripple on it, I would probably go to a buzz bait that makes more commotion. Mm -hmm. But for quieter type days, poppers are really, really good. Worm. A little no. switch over here. I'm still throwing the popper, but uh, you figured we might as well go to, go to the worm stuff? Yeah, well, what's happening, Bob, is it seems like the fish are coming up for the popper are short striking us now. Mm -hmm. So the next obvious thing would be to stay in the same area, but let's switch over to a bait that goes down to the level of the fish so they don't have to come so far. Right. And uh, yeah, that was a small one, but it's a start, and that could be the first clue to switch over. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's another case of, you know, I I say it all the time: listening to the bass. You got to listen to the bass. You got to listen to the bass. But it's really true. And then you're just throwing it up on that ledge and is dragging it down, or what are right. you doing? Yep, I'm throwing it up in the shallower water, and it's a real subtle ledge. I mean, it, it's it's just a slope. That's one of the things about Manasquan Reservoir is you're not going to find a lot of sharp drops. Mm -hmm. It's gentle slopes and gentle tapers. So we're in about eight feet of water now. I'm throwing up into about four or five, and the fish are right on the edge of that taper, coming down. There he is. I'm on the Carolina rig. I had a little tap myself. Yeah. And we're just, we're probing right now to see where these fish are moving from the shallows back to the, to the depth. And we got, we got the, the, uh, the dam behind us there. And, uh, well, there you go. Yeah. Yep, they're out in the grass now. The same fish we were catching on the pop bars, we're now catching a little bit deeper. And uh, hopefully we'll get some a little bit bigger here in not too long. Yeah, they seem to be in this one little section right here where, where, the, yep. where, the, where the bend is and, mm -hmm. and, and the drop off. Right. Now, the nice thing is we're out to where we have a lot of landmarks. But if we were in a spot where we didn't have a lot of landmarks, we have a marker buoy ready to throw in the water to mark that spot in the grass mm -hmm. so we can get right back to the same spot. Right. And that's an important tip. It doesn't matter whether it's a water bottle or a commercially made marker buoy or anything else. If you can mark that spot and get right back to the exact spot, you'll catch a lot more fish. And they'll, they'll stay concentrated on that yep. spot and you can just work around it mm -hmm. and, and catch fish. So I think I'm going to get rigged back up, shorten my worm a little bit. There's one on the worm. Fishing a little bit deeper. Now, Steve, we moved from the uh, down down by the dam. We moved up here to this kind of a point. I would imagine you're going right. to call it. What do we have here with this? Well, that's exactly what we right, have, Bob. Is it? Okay, you can talk. I'll catch this fish. <laughs> okay. Well, what we have is an underwater point. It's got some amount of fish on it. <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh. You're catching one of Senko. Yep. I'm catching them on a worm. 
get that guy back. And what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take the trolling motor and I'm going to shut it down so we don't float over top of our spot. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Okay, very important with boat control. We're fishing into the wind. The wind is going to push us away from the fish if we hook a fish. Mm -hmm. If we get a big fish or whatever, and both of us have to land the fish, well, we're not going to blow up over top of the spot and spook the fish. This way, I can re-rig my worm, you can re-rig your worm, right. and what happens is we'll creep right back up on the spot, and we should be able to catch several fish off of one spot. Because we do have, it's real shallow behind oh, us, yeah, there, and then it just comes right into this one. There's only three or four feet of water up there where we're throwing into, mm -hmm. but we're sitting in about 10 feet of water. Right. And again, it's a little bit of a point, and it's got a, a gentle slope, not a real hard drop off. And what's happening is after these fish have spawned and stuff like that, they're pulling out to these first drops. Now what happens is we've got to work our way a lot of times through the smaller fish to get to the bigger fish. The smaller fish a lot of times are the most eager and going to bite first. Right, and they're the bank on that edge there. Right, but if we go through enough fish, we should get some bigger ones too. Uh, I'm going to work here and I'm going Yeah, I need to re-rig so. Keeper. It was out there though, man. Yep, that's right on that same spot that yep. we backed off on. Right. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's a little better fish. Yep. Uh, come here. Same spot. Yep. We backed off. We re-rigged. Tossed back up in there Ouch. and another fish. These fish are, are uh, cool. Yeah. They're not. They're not Usually, you can tell by you know water temperature. Mm -hmm. They're uh, cool. Well, that's uh, something else that's involved here is, you know, we've had some a really warm spring, and then all of a sudden it did cool down. It yeah. was 50 degrees this morning. Yep. And that changes the fish around. But what we're doing is we're starting to find these fish basically bunched up in small areas. Right. You know, that's that's three fish here in about five minutes off of this one corner of this point. So basically what we have to do is maintain our boat position, go over the area a little bit more, catch a few fish, yeah. and then move on if there's none left. Right. A lot of times, Steve, um, if we start catching like this, we'll, we'll get that school excited. Oh yeah. And that, that's an important thing to, to remember yep. when, you, when you're on fish like that because the other fish react. Yeah, there we go. the other fish <laughs> react. Do it, and we get them stirred up like right. this. Yep. So. Yeah, the pros call it activating the school. Yeah. And we're, uh, it seems like, now it does seem like we're getting about the same size fish. Right. In, in this group of fish. That doesn't mean there's a big one hanging out here oh, too. No. But, but again, that's one thing to remember. If, you, if, if you're on the fish, stay there. Oh yeah. And, and get, them, get them excited. No, there's no sense in, in stopping. Right. I mean, we know where they're at. Right. Why not catch a few? Yeah. Oh, one's stuck in the corner there. That's something about these hooks too, boy. They're sharp. Well, that's it. Sharp hooks, especially on the long cast we're making. Right. Because I, I know you can't mm. tell or, or see right. from the camera, but we've got about four and a half or five feet of visibility. Right. Okay. Which means the water's relatively clear. Right. And that alone can decide, you know, how deep or shallow the fish are. Right. But again, with that four or five foot of visibility, we also want to stay away from the fish. We don't want to be right on top of them. Ooh, there it is. Man, that's Fisher. Yeah. It's hooked. Yep. I think it's uh, it's time we got back and caught another one here. Yeah. At least I catch another one. Yeah. Well, we came here hoping for a nice small mouth. Let's see what you got. Pickerel. <laughs> Look at that one. That is a nice one, Bob. <laughs> and you know why he's nice? Because he's on your line and not mine. <laughs> that is a nice pickerel. Now, if you were my friend, you, you'd lip them for me. And... There is only so far that friends will, <laughs> friendship will go today. All right, let me just see here. I'm going to try to do this without. But you know what? Oh, my it's, rock, it's a quality pickerel. It is. That was a nice fish. Come here, fishy. Go ahead, just stick your hand in his mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ouch. 
All right, you're coming in. Ah, there we go. Oh, and look at that. I knew it was going to Now break. he's unhooked. Yeah. Oh, all right, come here. Oh. He's flopping. <laughs> I'm going to put him back real quick because he's slimy and literally yeah. slime. But there you go. Another fish. Look at that. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. It felt like a good fish. It was yeah. a good fish. Steve, we've moved to a, another part of the lake, and um, we got a lot of standing timber here. Right. That, now they flooded this, obviously, uh, the timber when they, when they made the lake. Um, it's rare to see standing timber up here in the, in the northeast. Right. Uh, but what do we have here, how, and how are we going to fish it? Well, as you said, this is, this, it's the woods that was flooded. I, I deer hunted here <laughs> uh, way back in the day. Uh, but we have standing timber. But we're really not fishing standing timber, even though we're fishing standing timber, if you get what I mean. And I'll explain it. There's a point that sticks out here, an old roadbed that comes out here along this edge. Inside the timber, it's about seven feet deep, eight feet deep. Where we're holding with the boat is 13 and a half feet deep. What we're doing is we're fishing a drop off and the timber is the icing on the cake. The icing is the cover that's on the structure. The structure is the break. The cover are the trees. These fish can, can, can get back in there. They got a lot of, lot of places to hide. And then they right. can just come right out here. They and, can move off to yeah. the deeper water, off the edge. They can move inside. And one of the things I like to concentrate on, if you can't see a tree that's laying over and horizontal, I'll go and cast to the clumps of trees and the bigger trees. They offer more cover and more shade to the fish, and that's where the fish will tend to be. And uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm doing something that you always yell at me about, and I'm fishing an open hook here again, but right. basically, uh, how would, what lures would we throw in here? Well, I fish soft plastics and jigs, stuff that's, you know, reasonably snag resistant. The other thing you could do is you could throw a crankbait up through this. Mm -hmm. There's no saying that you can't, and a lot of people don't throw a crankbait in there, which makes it a good tactic. Yeah, and, and a spinnerbait will go through sure. nicely too. And I've, over the years, I've caught some nice fish on spinnerbait sure. in here. Sure, absolutely. And again, it's relatively weedless. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just looks so good though. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. There's all this flooded timber. It's really, 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 really easy for somebody to look at it and just go into the timber and, and start casting it everything. And mm. in about two hours, your flipping wrist is all wore out <laughs> and you probably haven't caught a whole lot. So what I like to do is imagine that the timber isn't here at all. We're fishing a point, a point that's got a road bed on it. The timber is just the icing on the cake. Staying deep. Staying deep. I'm saying it's a big bass. Gotta keep him out of the trolling motor. Yeah. Yep, nice bass. Ooh. <laughs> nice big bass. Yep. Uh. Out here on this deep grass that we're fishing. Yep. yep. There you go, he's hooked good too, right in the roof of the mouth. Yep. Come here, sweetie. Oh. Come on. Come on. You can do it. I didn't know you could do it. You got him. Ah. There we go. That's a nice one. Whew. Well, we fished the wood. Right. And we didn't catch anything. That's right. Well, we fished the grass. And we're catching bass. We're catching bass. That's a nice chunky one, yep. too. Nice chunky one. Yeah. Nice Let's fish. Talk. Let's and that fish, bit. that fish was in about 14 feet of water. <laughs> right. Okay. We're, as you can see, we're out here away from the bank. Right. We're nowhere near shoreline. Right. Okay. We're fishing what most people would consider no middle of nowhere. Right. But we know that there's a grass line out here in about 14 feet of water. Right. And we're fishing slow. And when I'm saying slow, I'm saying <laughs> slow. I mean, we're really fishing slow. Just about dead sticking. Yeah. That's that. Basically, that's what I yep. was doing. Really. Just as we were just moving. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I was dragging through the grass. Yep. And, and that's uh, uh you know it's it's milfoil that's right. down there. Nice fat chunky fish. Yeah. Good tournament size fish. Yeah. I, I can't complain about that fish at all. 
Yeah, it's got, got a little, little mark on them there. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a it's a darn nice fish, and maybe we'll catch more out here. Yeah, now he's gonna yep. keep going back and forth. All right, bye. Yep, let's get him back. Come on, fishy. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There's another one. Just on that that weed edge again. Yep, about 12 feet of water. Every time we cruise through here, catch one or two of them. And again, it's quite shallow up by the bank. Right. It just comes out to where this uh, right. grass and is. That's, it's a big mistake this time of year a lot of people make. They want to go up next to the bank. They want to fish the trees and stuff like that. But when these fish move out, when the water gets you know into the 70s and gets even in the 80s later, these fish back off and they're off on the edge of the break. Right. And that's where that fish was. I got one swimming with it toward the boat. There he is. That was right off that grass. Yep. And I got one too. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I lost it. That's okay. We'll just show mine. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? They're not huge, but we're having a ton of fun here. Yeah. I don't know how many bass we've caught today. Really? And I'm, oh, you're getting right back in there. Huh? Oh, yeah. I you don't want to admire my fish? No, no, that's okay. That's a good one. <laughs> Watch. He gets really big <laughs> oh, we're having a ball out here today yeah, it's cool. really fun and again it was one of the things that steve you mentioned before let the fish talk to you yep let the fish talk to you tell you what they want they want to be off on these edges in the grass exactly they don't want to be in the wood no i mean we've we got fished, a piece of wood here but the, the grass is basically what we're fishing we fished wood we fished um some shorelines that were a little bit deeper um we fish riprap too what a a fish yeah there you go <laughs> i think it was one i missed before think so <laughs> well guess what i just cast right in behind you oh okay i don't okay. long 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 line release of yep. that one but yeah and that's the thing once you get on a school of these fish you can catch fish after fish after fish and you, we got them excited again right now here's the other thing we did we left here for an hour right let the fish calm down again now we can come back and we can catch more of them. And now for a closer look at today's tackle, Delaware Valley Outdoors presents The Tackle Box. For more information about the tackle used on today's show, go to DelawareValleyOutdoors.com. Well, Steve, we're at the Tackle Box, and uh, we're at the Manasquan Reservoir today, mm -hmm. and great. We've fished here before, but oh, it's a sure. great place. It's not far from home, right off of uh, I-95 in uh, Hal, New Jersey. Right. Uh, and if you want more information, uh, you can go to our website, Delaware Valley Outdoors, and we'll give you directions and everything else. And if you can pick up one of these at the, the, at the, the guard stand there, right. gives you all the information that you need. All right, tackle, we kept it simple today, Steve. Not a whole lot of stuff. Yep. You went with a, uh, a popper. Yep. And uh, Worked pretty good this morning. Yeah, caught fish this morning on the popper. It's one of those things that even though weather conditions weren't quite perfect, it was still a nice calm day. The water temperature's up. Had to try it, and guess what? It surprised us. We caught some fish we on it. We caught some fish on it. So, again, this, the clock cutter would, would have been better, but right. it was early in the morning, and we still caught fish on it. Right. And now, it, one of the keys to the popper is the right tackle to fish a popper. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay? I was fishing a popper on a crankbait rod. This is a fiberglass crankbait rod, six foot medium action. I've got a loose speed spool, MCS series, 6.1 to one gear ratio. Not because I had the reel so fast, but a lot of times you're taking up a lot of slack with the hook set with a popper, and it really helps you get a good solid hook set on the fish. You're bringing up that line quick. Right. right. And then <laughs> I went with my bait, and that is the I think this is a Yumdinger or Senko, mm -hmm. whatever you want. And again, open hook, wacky style. Right. And we caught caught a lot of nice fish uh, with this. Again, color you always choose. Green pumpkin. <laughs> Green pumpkin. And this has got a lot of salt on it. Yep. But, uh, and I, I did even put some Mega Strike on it for mm -hmm. a little bit today, just to give it a little bit so the fish would, would hold it longer. Right. And again, I was almost dead sticking this today in the sense oh, yeah. of just throwing it out and just dragging it. Mm -hmm. and this, 
work, keeping it over the weeds. Right. And it, it worked uh, uh, real well. And now this bait that you used, um, it caught some nice fish on it oh, too. Oh, sure. And this is a... a, a well, it's a, a zoom tail. curly tail worm. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in watermelon. I really like watermelon anytime I'm fishing water clarity at three feet or more. Watermelon or green pumpkin, but mm -hmm. you were fishing green pumpkin, so I decided to go with watermelon. And again, you just hooked that uh, on a jig head and, uh, yep. and or test it. Yep, I fished it a little bit on a, on a, a, um, on a shaky head. I fished it on a Carolina rig and caught a few fish like that, but I caught most of them on a Texas rig. And just like you said with the dead sticking, I was doing a dead slow drag. I was just slowly dragging it, slowly dragging it. And the hits, they weren't real hard today. Mm. You know, all of a sudden, you'd see a little jump of the line, the line would go sideways. You'd say, oh, is that grass or, or whatever? So <laughs> the, the, the hits were not real hard today. And a lot of times, in fact, that one fish I had, I thought it was grass. It turned right. out to be yeah, nice fish. <laughs> nice fish. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you have to remember when you're over here at, at the reservoir uh, is that you must wear a life jacket at all times when on the water. It's one of their rules and regulations. Right. To have. Now, we have two styles here, Steve. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this one and, and that one there. Well, the two styles are essentially the same, except for one big difference. This first one, you wear very much like a normal life vest. It's much thinner and it's much more comfortable. Now, if we were out there in a, in a foam life vest all day, oh. yeah, we'd have heat stroke by now and it's not that warm. Yeah. The other one, which is really neat, is this fanny pack style. Now, the fanny pack style you wear around your belt, you would, and I'm not going to, no. uh, if you fell in, you jerk the string, it would inflate, and then you put the life vest over top of your head two very comfortable ways to fish out here. And you have to, and one other thing is that with the, our big boat here, mm -hmm. you have to take the prop off. Right. You cannot have your big boat with the prop. If you don't, you have a smaller boat, you can just take the gas tank out right. and keep the prop on. Yep. But with the big boat, we can't take the gas tanks out of this. Mm -hmm. And so we have to take the prop, which is no big deal. Right. And uh, in fact, it's a good thing to do because sometimes you want to check the prop for a string or anything around sure. the back of it. Yep. And, uh, and that's it. Again, if you want to have a good time, come to the reservoir and uh, that's the tackle box. There we go. Well, Steve, decent fish. Yeah. Caught them all like that all day long. Hey, if you get a chance, come over to the reservoir. It's, it's a, not far from our place, right off of uh, 195 here right. coming down. Uh, and they get over here and get some fishing in. Get, and this is this is not even a big one yet, really, right? In a sense, don't forget to go to our website, Delaware Valley Outdoors, where you can find all the notes and how to get here. And follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Twitter. And I'm Bob Murray. I'm Steve Horvath. We'll see you on the water. Oh, oh. and he's gone. Oh. Oh, it's stuck. Uh, stuck on something. Oh, no. Yeah. He got his head up. Uh, yeah. Once you got him coming your way. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a nice quick release too. You never, yeah. you never pulled it out of the water. Nope. No, that's not good for it. Oh. How do you miss him like that? I saw the bear. <laughs> he dropped it. He picked it right up, Steve. Yep.